Hey, what's going on everybody? Michael here. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're taking a look at yet another Tesla accessory. This time we have the returning Tessery. They are once again bringing another video to you general viewers. And today we're going to take a look at the Tessery 9-inch CarPlay instrument dashboard screen for the Model 3 and for the Model Y. Now, full disclaimer, full disclosure, everybody. This was sent to me by Tessery. I want to thank them in advance for making this video possible. However, they do not have a say or tell me what to say in this video. They have no affiliation with my opinion or how I speak in this video. So everything you are hearing is 100% me and bias free and neutral. Now the Tessery display is supposed to be an extra add-on that is added on to the base of where your steering wheel is to give you that secondary display like the Model S and the X. But this does this in a very nice and clean package, which you're going to see in this video, and we're going to go over the installation process, and we're going to go over everything you need to know. I am also going to put this out there, guys, that this is going to be split into two parts. This is our unboxing, our setting up, and then afterwards, we will be giving my impressions after using it for a couple of weeks, which I have been actively testing, and also the second part will pick up where this video leaves off, which you will see at the end of the video. So please stay tuned so you can understand what's happening. But anyway guys, this is the installation process. So the first step you have to do is pop off the side panels. As you see, once again, my returning uncle who is the guru or the goat, who is the best I would say in language terms, he is the best when it comes to car accessories. Well, of course we made our first mistake there, but the first step is to pop off the side panels so you can access the dashboard screws. Now, if you have a Tesla Model Y that is 2024, they now have these hexagon screws that are now screwed into the side of the dashboard, which you're about to see in just a moment. And this installation took slightly longer than we were anticipating, but it took a total of two hours. One hour it was to align and another hour to put everything back. But again, you take the hexagon screw, you make sure you measure it up. As you see, we have to measure. This was something that was not present in most of the videos. So if this is now being added into new Teslas or if it's always been there, well, you're hearing about it first because you simply just can't lift it up. You have to unscrew the screws and then only after you've unscrewed the screws on each side, then you could lift the dashboard. So as anybody that's gonna make these videos, please show this part in your video because let's be honest, that's so blatant that you're not showing the whole stuff, but I get it, but anyway, after removing the screws, the dashboard becomes loose and that's when you could pull it off. Now, in this video, you're going to see that my dashboard has a carbon fiber cover. That's going to be taken off and I'll explain after. So once we pull the dashboard off and we expose, we then count inside the grills, the holes of where we're going to place the screen. And according to my uncle's calculations, we've counted, as you can see, we counted 24 to 26 holes. That is where it aligns center and right where the steering wheel is at head level. Again, we measured it out and we also put it in flush to make sure, and as you're gonna see, we did sample testings. And after you've done the measurements and after you've done everything, you're obviously then going to continue and run the wires through the back, which you're gonna see. But real quickly, make sure you get the measurements properly done first before attaching the back plate, which you're gonna see in just a few moments as well. But here it is, we aligned everything, we put the wires through and we did a mock test of where it's gonna go. And once we had our measurements set, that is where we put all three wires. Now the three wires in the back are connected to the screen and also the onboard system that gets the speedometer, the turn signal, and also gets the mileage and everything, which again, you will see towards the end of the video. Now. Once you have your measurements, there is going to be a back panel here. As you can see, you have to screw in each of these back panels and align the wires into the three holes. Once you do that, the screen will attach itself correctly and will stay in place with little to no issue at all. So that's essentially all you have to do. And if there is any troubles, they do give you extra screws in the box. So you can also adjust accordingly should you need to as well. Now the next step is of course running the wire. So as you can see, we're running it through the opposite side where all the wires and controls are placed. We run it through to feed it through the entire dashboard system. So that way it makes the installation process easier and that way we could save a lot of time. And my uncle's preferred choice of method is using the coat hanger. Listen, if you grew up in Brooklyn, the coat hanger method works for everything, just saying. But anyway, here is now where the wires need to go. So you're gonna have to connect these into two different sets. One wire is gonna be the main computer onboard system. That's where it will read all the information. And then the second computer is where you plug in to get the power. 
Now it does feature extra adapters. So it gives you back the ports in case you have to get your car done and inspected through Tesla. So they will have access to these ports as you are seeing. Once we've aligned everything, then we do a mock trial once again to make sure that everything is stable and everything is secured. As you could see, we had to make sure everything was lined up. And once we lined it up, the last effort we had to do was just place it down and see how it looked. And if we had to make any slight adjustments, the adjustments will be made accordingly. But as you can see, once we put the dashboard down, there is the end result of what it looks like. And honestly, it looks really nice. Now, as you can see, my cover had to be taken off because the reason we took the cover off is because it was not remaining flush. So if you are going to install this, you will unfortunately have to remove any extra add-ons that you have on top of the dashboard because if it's paper thin, it will work. But if it's thick like this, it won't. But we'll have a way around that in part two. Now the next step is, of course, plugging in the wires, connecting the red with the red, blue with the blue. Now again, these are all the wires that are linked to the power source, but this yellow wire, we're going to hold off on that one and we're going to save this for part two because that is where the camera is going to go. Now, full disclosure, before we conclude, and now as you see, we're putting it in, the camera accessory is an add-on that you put onto the front of the car. This allows you the option to get a front view when you pull out of a spot and links to the dashboard. However, during the installation process, we had to stop that because we have ran into the error of not having the right tools at that moment. So we are going to save that installation for a part two to open the front of the car. But anyway, moving past that, now it's just a matter of putting everything together. So as you can see, we plugged in all the cables. My uncle was able to reach the main cable. And another thing to note is that if you have the Intel or AMD models, you have to make sure that you select which model car you have with what type of processor is processing the car because each version will have different plugs and different outlets that are going to need to be plugged in so make sure if you order this you specify what you have but now once we have all the connections set up now it's just a matter of putting everything back together and as you can see putting it back is about as easy as it was taking apart <laughs> so my favorite part in this whole thing was really just putting everything back <laughs> Sorry guys, listen, this was a fun experiment. This was fun doing this with my uncle. I have a lot of good time with my Uncle Shell and honestly, this is some of our biggest bonding moments and if I'm just gonna go off the video for a second, I just wanna take this moment to appreciate my uncle for really taking his time out of his day to do these videos. It gives me and him a chance to really bond and collaborate, but it also gives us a chance to really do some fun and interesting things that I don't even think he thought I was gonna get into. So I wanna take this moment to really dedicate and thank my uncle. But anyway guys, once we've run the wire through the dashboard, and through the side of the car it's just a matter of putting everything together and making sure everything locks into place we put all the panels back we put everything neatly and the screws into the dashboard so it doesn't come loose and then once everything is finally safe and secure that is where we now get our first look at the dashboard the dashboard has a very nice ui interface it matches almost similarly to tesla's but they do have different themes and options which you are going to see but essentially it is your standard display but the cool benefit of this display is it gives you the access to apple carplay android auto google maps Waze. it gives you unlimited flexibility and you could control the steering wheels with the dashboard in the settings you have tire pressure units you have different settings you can make it more smoother you can improve the performance you can also change the color and the software of your car you can change it to Fahrenheit but just one thing I want to briefly mention because if you notice on the screen it did say kilometers and I want to clear that up real quickly guys when you were in park mode yes it does say kilometers and when you start driving it converts to miles per hour so just want to put that out there that if you see that on your screen, that is not a glitch that is intentional, but it fixes itself as you drive. Now taking a look and peeling off the safety plastic, these are just some of the themes that come with the car. And these are some amazing details and graphics. I really think Tessery did a great job with designing the interface and really doing a solid job, if I say so myself. And now the next part is of course connecting to Apple CarPlay. So the way you connect it to CarPlay is very easy. You just connect it to Bluetooth, allow CarPlay to connect, and then once you connect it up, you can then switch back and forth from the standard display, which you see with all the themes, as this is the third theme. But if you wanna switch it over to Apple CarPlay, you connect your phone to Bluetooth, and there you go. One thing I do wanna mention is that it does have the ability to connect to over-the-air Wi-Fi using your phone's hotspot or your actual Wi-Fi connection to receive updates. It is using a Linux OS software, so it will get its updates based on there. But before I wrap up this video and before I wrap up all this talking, I appreciate you watching this. 
The only thing I would say that I wish that they had was a little bit more flexibility on some of the themes. So I hope that they do release a software where the themes are more customizable, they're more accessible. But all in all, this was a very cool installation. This was very, very cool and fun to do. I had a lot of fun with it. And I'm going to end off the video with myself as you're going to see us driving. But this was a great experiment. I had a great time with my uncle. We did a great job together. He did a phenomenal job. The installation was very easy, but make sure you guys have the right tools. So without further ado, here are my final thoughts and my first impressions. And here's Apple CarPlay for your pleasure to see what it looks like. And again, guys, I will be following up with a part two with more extensive details. But anyway, guys, I'm going to let myself end this video. I hope you enjoyed this part. Now, let's send it off. But anyway, guys, now that we've installed the accessory, now that the dashboard cam is officially on, as you can see, we're using it with the autopilot feature. So here is the Tesla software. And if you could take a look at the screen, it's hard to see it from this angle. I'm going to try to move the camera over so you can see it has the blue lines. It also has the speedometer. Originally, it was in kilo, um, kilowatts. Uh, what was it? Kilometers? I forgot what the distance was, but now it's in miles per hour. So that wasn't a glitch on our end. It does show the regenerative braking and the accelerator on that side. It also has all the displays on the corner, just like the Tesla car. So it does a really good job of mapping and it's very accurate. The speedometer is matching what's on the screen. It also matches the back speed. It also shows you on the side of the road, you know, who's on this side or who's on that side. Like watch, if we could see real quickly, there's a car coming up to my side. You'll see if you come this way more, you'll see that it'll glow orange as the car was coming up to me on my left. We're gonna take a look real quickly again guys do not do this while you're filming just make sure for safety reasons as you can see it turns orange and then the car is gonna pass me so it does show the safety parts on the side now I am gonna wrap this video but just to let you guys know that we are not done with this video there is a part two coming out there is a part two where we're gonna install the front camera so we're gonna do a continuation video we're gonna show you how to install that and we're gonna do that at another point in time so please guys subscribe make sure you hit the notification because when we upload part two we're gonna be installing the front dash camera and linking it to the dashboard and then we'll show you how to do all that but anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this review I hope you guys enjoyed it I really enjoyed it I think this is one of the best accessories I've gotten for this car it really makes the world of difference sure it is a little annoying with this steering wheel but maybe in the future I'll get the yoke steering wheel and one last thing I want to mention is that the airflow actually doesn't feel restricted I can still feel the air blowing at me and you can see right here I've positioned it here I can still feel the air blowing so I don't really feel any difference it feels like it's just part of the car and it's a great accessory to have I'll leave a link in the description. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two because more videos and more test accessories are coming. You're not going to want to miss them. Thank you for watching and peace.